What's going on growers, it's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It may still be hot, but don't be fooled. Fall and winter are still on the way. So today, I wanna to share with you 12 cold hardy veggies that everyone should be growing through fall and winter. Let's go. It may seem silly thinking about growing cold hardy veggies when it's 90 degrees out, but as gardeners, we need to always be planning for the future and preparing for that. I'll tell you what, it's an amazing feeling when you can go out to your garden in like mid-December and grab fresh garden snacks, yeah, I know, right from the plants growing. It's kind of unique and it's a lot of fun. People don't think that you can push it that far, but if you're smart, you plan well, you definitely could. This is why I want to make this video right now though, because a lot of your plants that are very cold hardy, they have to be kind of established before they're going into the much colder months. So if you have a tiny kale plant, like a seedling, and the frost comes, that could kill that plant. But if you have a big established kale plant, that would be way more cold hardy. And that leads us to our first cold hardy plant that everyone should be growing, and this is Swiss chard. So Bill Mollison says that Americans don't grow enough Swiss chard. So in Bill Mollison's honor, I planted a lot of Swiss chard this year, and I'm so happy that I did. This Swiss chard I planted in spring, and now I'm gonna be able to grow that even late into fall and winter. So it's an incredible plant to be able to do that with. Sometimes people run into issues with a lot of the bites on the Swiss chard, but what I've been using this year is the BT spray. It's made a huge difference, not only for my Swiss chard, but my kale also. So this is one that's relatively easy to grow. Does really well because it's a biennial, so you don't really have to worry about it bolting late into the season like a lot of your lettuces. So convenient. The second cold hardy veggie that everyone should be growing is an obvious one, and this one is lettuce. So leaf lettuce will withstand a light frost, but when it comes to growing lettuces and a lot of your other things, I want to introduce this idea of variety selection. So some lettuces will be more cold hardier than others when it comes to variety. So some like your butterhead or your romaine are going to be hardier than some of your other ones. So make sure you pick the right variety when growing lettuce late into the winter. Also, it's so fast growing, so you can continually plant more and more crops. I'm going to be planting crops of lettuce even into mid, late September. The third cold hardy veggie that everyone should be growing is Claytonia also known as winter purslane or miner's lettuce. I don't have it growing right now because it's too early for me to plant it now. Last year I had this one growing, I'll show you a clip of it. This was my favorite cold hardy one probably out of all of them. It grew the latest into the season. It has a delicious flavor and it's got that succulent thick juiciness like you do with normal purslane. Such a good one for cut and come again too. The fourth cold hardy veggie that everyone should be growing are carrots. And growing carrots in the winter is my favorite because as it starts to get cold, the sugars in the carrots start to come out and then that acts as like almost a natural antifreeze, uh, keeping the carrots, you know, cold hardy through the winter. But they won't grow a lot once the temperatures get really cold. So you have to make sure you have carrots planted around now in the late summer or early fall. This way they're established going into the winter. So if you want, you could just come out late in the winter and grab the carrots out of the ground, almost using the ground as like a form of a uh, storage. So Tuck's in here looking at some of these carrots. He'll probably end up grabbing one because he loves them so much, just like me. We'll let him go at his own carrot here. Get this one, boy. Show him the base of it and kind of encourage him to go for it. A little lower, boy. Maybe I'll loosen it up for him a little. Hey, boy, All right, looks like he wants this one. I'll take this one out for him. We got a bunch of carrots here because we plant 16 per foot in the square foot guarding method. And you can see they grow well. So carrots like these will be established. They'll do great all through the winter, but I've got other rounds of carrots that I'm planting. I'm always staggering everything. So we'll let in Tuck enjoy this little carrot. And they're probably his favorite cold hardy veggie too. And he doesn't even know it, but that late in the season winter carrot is so much better than the one at this time of the year when all the sugars come in it. So good. We'll let him finish it and then we'll move on to the next ones. The fifth cold hardy veggie that everyone should be growing is one of my all time favorite veggies. And this is kale. This happens to be my favorite variety too, the dino kale. And kale is so good because it's a biennial too, so it doesn't flower. So it's not like lettuce where you have to worry about it like bolting and everything late into the season. I'm eating this kale from spring all the way into late winter. So this is such a good variety for flavor. And again, like the carrots, as it gets colder, it's gonna get sweeter. But when it comes down to it, like most other plants, you wanna plant the correct variety that is super cold hardy going into the season. So let me bring you over to the red Russian kale, which is even cold hardier than this one. Right here is the red Russian kale. You can see I have a few plants just getting established. These are gonna last me late into the winter because this is one of the most cold hardy ones. I heard the white Russian kale is also very cold hardy too, but I've never tried that one. Here's a new variety of kale I've never tried before. I'm 
going to put the name in the description because it's kind of hard, hard to pronounce. So it's a little, a little unique, a little different. I'm not sure how cold hardy it is. But the other kales that are super cold hardy are the curled leaves ones, like the dark boar kale. Very cold hardy. Again, variety selection is huge when it comes to growing late into the season. The sixth cold hardy veggie that everyone should be growing are peas. And if you tried your hands at peas in the spring and didn't have much luck, try them in the fall. It's easier in my opinion because peas love growing in about 55 to 70 degree weather. So in the summer you can get that early heat and it just kind of knocks them off a little bit. One thing I love about peas too is they grow better in the cooler temperatures. So when your beans are starting to slow down, that's when the peas start to come through. So you get that transition, which, which I love so much. Just make sure your peas are relatively large and established once the cool weather starts coming because you wanna make sure they're larger. Young pea seedlings won't be able to withstand the cold weather as much as large established ones are. Also, once the frosts really start coming, the, the fruit and the flowers really can't you know, deal with that frost. So you gotta make sure you get, get them growing soon so that you can actually get some good harvest before it gets way too cold out. The seventh cold hardy veggie that everyone should be growing are radishes. And these will withstand really cold temperatures, even down to like 26 degrees. So your leaves may burn and die off from that cold weather, but the radish, the actual root, should survive it. These are super quick cropping, so you can grow many uh, you know, different rounds of radishes because they're only about four weeks or so. And just make sure that you're planting winter radishes. There's some radishes that grow well in the spring and are quick, and then there's good later winter radishes that grow a little slower. Those are probably the ones you want. The eighth cold hardy veggie that everyone should be growing, I'm grouping three into one, and they are cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli. They're all in the same family as the kale, not quite as cold hardy, but one of the main differences with these is when it comes to kale, we're only looking to eat the leaves. When it comes to broccoli, we want the broccoli head, the cauliflower, the cauliflower head. So we need to make sure the timing is better for plants like these. It could be a little tougher, but I think it's worth it. If you have issues like I did in the spring and summer where your broccoli wants to bolt because it just gets too hot, this season, the fall, may be a better time to grow these three brassicas. The last four cold hardy veggies that everyone should be growing, I don't have planted yet because it's still too early. I'm gonna be planting these in the coming weeks. The first one is arugula. So arugula is really good at lasting later into the season. It's cold hardy, much cold hardier than the lettuce I found. And it doesn't grow that great in the summer because for me it just bolts so quick. It's a little spicy, a little bitter, but an incredible flavor. Another cold hardy veggie, which will be actually our number 10, is Mizuna. So Mizuna is a Japanese mustard. It's cold hardy and it's got like this uh, bitter spice to it. So it's great mixed into your salads. The 11th one is going to be spinach. So spinach is a super obvious one. And we want to make sure we're taking advantage of variety again when it comes to spinach. Growing ones like the winter Bloomsdale. I have found that that's one of the most cold hardy spinaches. I don't have them in the ground yet. Again, because it's just a little too early. The 12th cold hardy veggie that everyone should be growing. I like to group a few together. I call them the choys. They are bok choy, pak choy, and tatsoi. So earlier in the season, I grew some purple bok choy and it flowered so quickly because when you have the quick changes in temperatures, especially from like hot to cold, cold to hot, they seem to want to flower like that. Even though it's a biennial, it just bolts pretty quickly. So I like growing the bok choys and all the other choys later into the season because they're relatively cold hardy and they've got that like thick juiciness to them. I don't know. They're just so good when you mix them into salads. It gives a unique texture. I'm here to tell you that there's nothing like extending the growing season both on the front and the back end. Even when it comes to things like tomatoes, eating those later than other people because you've got good varieties that extend late into the season. Or eating kale and some of your other stuff in mid-winter. But if you want to extend it even further and guarantee yourself almost that you're growing stuff late, then you could build a hinged hoop house like I have. I've got a video on my channel. I'll put a link right down here. But I have a double layer hinged hoop house. What this does is brings me up three growing zones so I can grow stuff late into the season that most people just can't. Makes all the difference. And I make these videos show you all the things I'm harvesting and stuff because I'm trying to paint the picture and just got, kind of give you guys something to work towards. I heard a great saying. It says that the price is easy if the promise is clear. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it and I wanted to make this video because I remember so many years in the past where it's like November or something we still haven't had a frost and I feel like oh man I missed out I could be growing so many things right now so that's why I'm making this video I don't want you to have that same level of regret that I have feeling like you missed out like you could have done more so that's why I wanted to make it now so you can start preparing for that later season if you guys enjoyed the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button share it with your friends don't forget to check out the merch down low and remember whenever you're on Amazon do not forget to use our Amazon affiliate link for your shopping so last video we did a giveaway and we're gonna have two winners right now. I'm gonna put them right at the bottom, right on the screen right here. So I'll email you guys uh, 
and let you know that you won and then we'll contact and we'll send that gift card out. Again, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Me and Tuck will be back to you again real soon. We 